Welcome back to Briggs on Books, our truly international talk show. Do you have kids? Do you have grandkids? I got the books for you. You're ready to pick your new book. You got to hear about uh, these books, by the way. They're a series about, a, obviously, a rabbit. Uh, here's the first of the series, The Night I Spent in a People House. And not only do I have the books and information about the books and where you can get them, I have the author right here, uh, Douglas Berry. Welcome, Douglas. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, that was, did I get that one right? The Night I Spent in a People House, is that the first one? Yes, sir, sure is, yep. Tell me, tell our viewers how this book and this series came about. Yeah, it was uh, really just kind of laid in my lap. I mean, you're reading to your kids as they grow up and stuff, and uh, you think to yourself, it's like, well, I should be able to write a children's book. And well, one day, lo and behold, he was about nine years old. He's 27 now. My son went in the backyard, caught a baby rabbit, brought it in the house, named it Jasper. And I said, well, you can keep it overnight, but we got to let it go the next day. And we let it go the next day. And I looked at my wife. I'm like, there's a great idea for a children's book right there. Yeah. I said, he's going to go back outside. And he's going to try to tell all his little wooden friends that he spent the night in a people house and they're not going to believe him. Yeah. We're going to talk about the other two in a moment, a day at the beach and uh, farmer Jasper. Tell us about your background. Were you uh, on a career path to be a children's book author? <laughs> no, not really by any means. Uh, we moved to Maryland, which is where I'm at now with mom, uh, to be poultry farmers. Mm. Uh, so we did that for about, uh, I guess, four years. I did that for about four years. And when I graduated high school, I did it enough to realize I did not want to be a poultry farmer. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I joined the Air Force um, and did uh, 20 years in the Air Force uh, as a weapon system specialist on the A-10s and F-16s, which means I maintained the weapon systems on those aircraft and I also loaded them. Those are jets, right? Yep. The, the kind that we see going, we see them on the news every night doing something. And yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a highly technical thing. You have to, everything must be very precise and clean and work properly. There, 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 was, there was no oops. No, oops. <laughs> no, room, no room for error, that's for sure. Um, where all did you get to go with that career? Uh, my path uh, started in uh, Davis Mothin Air Force Base in Tucson, Arizona, which I absolutely loved it down there. What a what a great place! And Tucson. being from the East Coast and going to the Southwest, it was a complete visual difference and everything down there. And from there, uh, I did my year tour in uh, South Korea, Kunsan, South Korea. Uh, from there, I came back to the States uh, at Shaw Air Force Base, and I spent the rest of my 15 years at Shaw Air Force Base in uh, South Carolina. But while I was at Shaw, I did have an opportunity uh, to do four tours uh, to the Middle East, two to Saudi Arabia and two to Kuwait. Wow. Uh, so you uh, knew that uh, you didn't want to settle in the, in the desert of the uh, Saudi Arabia, I would imagine. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, you, when you could settle in the desert of Tucson. And so you retired and came back? Is that what happened? Yeah, we retired at a, at a Shaw Air Force Base, and we moved up to Camden, South Carolina. I wanted to get a little farther away from the base so I didn't have to listen to jet noise all the time. I've got the constant tinnitus reminder oh, as it boy. is, but, but I wanted to get away from the noise a little bit, and now I'm actually back to working on the base again, so I guess I just can't stay away from the base. <laughs> work at the base. Now, your son had caught a rabbit. He was nine years old, brought it in the house, named it Jasper, and you wrote a book about it. And then uh, here, I think, is the second book, A Day at the Beach with Jasper yeah. and Friends. Did you actually take the rabbit to the beach? I, I, yeah, he, he went to the beach with his buddies. Uh, we didn't take our rabbit to the beach. Uh, but uh, everybody, I sold, I thought I'd sell 30 copies of the first book. I sold about 500, and oh, people boy. started asking me where are they going next. And I'm like, I have no idea. I yeah. thought it was going to be one and done. We like the vacation at the beach, so I found a way to get Jasper and his woodland friends to the beach and enjoy it and make sand castles and all that. Yeah, I, I, sorry, I forgot. I'm from California. I forgot there's beaches in South Carolina. Is that where your beaches yeah. are? Yeah. yeah. And then farmer Jasper. Is he a poultry farmer, by the way? Yeah, they do feed the chickens. That's for sure. Yeah. But uh, Mouse is actually the farmer. I named it Farmer Jasper just for an ease of a title. Uh, but yeah, they can't find their, their friend Mouse for a day. And they're like, well, where's he at? And they're like, well, he lives down on this farm. Let's go see what he's up to. And he has to do chores before he can play. Even a mouse has chores on the farm. So all the critters get together and help him do the chores. And they feed the animals. They plant a garden. What and, a great uh, lesson. What a great days. lesson story. My friends used to come over to my house. And I had to do my chores. And they would help me get the chickens yeah. or whatever it is we were doing. 
Now, uh, who, what age group are these books for? They're great for uh, probably zero up to seven beginner reader kind of thing. Great bedtime stories. I've got folks that say, you know, my kid asked for the same book over and over again. Can you please write another book? <laughs> so yeah. I've got that a couple of times. Kids tend to do that. Now, I'm, I'll tell uh, a tip to our viewers, go out there and uh, order these books, but don't just click one and order one copy. Order five or ten of them because your kid's going to be going to birthday parties and you're going to have to give out gifts all the time. So have a stack of these books there and make that the book you give out. And by the way, whenever I order kids' books, I uh, send it to the kids or the kids' parents, but I send a uh, copy to their grandma too because grandmas love to read the books to the kids. And the kid shows up at grandma's house. Hey, there's that book that I have at home. I love that book. Read it, grandma. So uh, uh, especially children's books, I do a lot of sending them here and sending them there and buying extra copies and uh, baby showers even. You know, what, oh, are yeah. you gonna, what are you gonna give someone? Give them some books at the baby shower too. So um, sure. that's exciting. You got another book in you, Douglas? I do. Actually, i am uh, got about three quarters of the way written. Uh, it's going to be Jasper's Christmas story. Everybody tells me Jasper needs a Christmas story. So we're going to, first half is going to be about Santa Claus. And the second half, we're going to, they're going to see a manger scene. And then I was going to fly down from a church steeple and explain the whole manger scene to him. So I tell I'm you, we have a lot, of, uh, a lot of a lot of authors on and to be able to hit 500 books. It's, uh, that's pretty exciting. Yeah, it happened pretty quick. It caught me completely off guard. Uh, the sales have calmed down a little bit. I'm not on, you know, New York Times bestsellers list or anything like that. But uh, it's a, it's a fun hobby right now, and I'm just seeing how far it'll go. And, and you know, maybe we'll get there one day. I'm really taken by the covers. Uh, you have somebody who does the art artwork for you. I do. Uh, I use a hybrid publisher, so they they give me all that stuff i had 10 uh illustrators to choose from nice. and i knew the age group i was going with i needed to keep the images somewhat simple but yet have a lot of stuff around but not a whole lot of detail and that's what i shot for and uh, they pretty much nailed it they, they really do look good um now where can people get the books literally on all the dot coms they're on amazon barnes and noble books uh, books a million uh walmart.com my big goal the upcoming years is to get them actually stocked in stores and we're starting to get them in some gift shops so uh, we're fun. getting there man we just yeah. keep pushing that'd be fun and and i put your web address i didn't get your web address i didn't understand it at first but now i get it jasper in friends.com jasper dash in dash friends.com and that's the web address so what, what will we find there uh, just a lot of updated information. There's actually some uh, there's some pages for the kids to do. There's a little fun and games page, uh, oh, search word, search stuff, uh, that kind of thing, coloring pages. Uh, a lot of silly pictures I've taken of Jasper and, and just yeah. put on there. There's a photos page that they can look at and updated information. And the newest thing is this uh, little stuffed Jasper. <laughs> so if you go on there and you contact me, I can get you a, a, a Jasper, stuffed Jasper yeah. and your little one can hold on to them while you're reading the stories. Can you imagine a kid reading this book and they, you know, you mentioned they read them over and over and over. Read me the Jasper again, read me Jasper. And then you take the kid to the, to the uh, internet and open your webpage, there's activity there. And, and then at Christmas time or birthday, they actually get the Jasper, hold Jasper up one more time. Sure, let me try to get him in screen there. That but is there a lot is. of fun. Yeah, they they did a great job. He looks just like he came jumped right out of the book. It's just yeah. amazing. That's fun. Uh, Douglas, we're out of time. Any last thoughts for our viewers? Uh, no, uh, just you're too old to start something you're passionate about. And also for the younger kids out there, it's like uh, get the word fail out of your vocabulary. There's no such thing as failure. It's just learning. Just keep pushing through. You'll get to the success. And you did it. I always say when somebody writes a book, congratulations. I mean, it's, it's enough work to write it, but to get it through the publishing process and get it out there, that's a lot of steps. Is it getting easier, by the way? I'd like to say it is, but it doesn't seem like it is. It uh, like it. And marketing becomes your new full-time job. Yeah, now you're a full-time book marketer. <laughs> All right, uh, Douglas, thanks for coming on the show. I hope you'll come back again and again. Thanks for having me. It was fun. Thank you. And for our viewers, stick around. We'll have another author right after this.